y'all, this is Cindy. I'm the Tireless Tangler, and I want to welcome you all to a new lesson in our Tangled Ribbon Flower series. This is lesson two, and we are going to be doing the Tangle Shattuck today. Shattuck is a Zentangle original tangle, and that is why I put ZHQ there. It stands for Zentangle Headquarters. And uh, it's just a short way of doing that. So uh, today we are going to work on Shattuck. It is an original pattern that a lot of people uh, use in art. It can be done in a straight way, as I've done here and here at the, at the bottom. It can also be done curved, as I've done at the top. So let's figure out what we're going to do with Shattuck. Now, I will tell you that I have changed the format a bit today. Uh, I missed doing a tile with you guys last time. And so uh, we are going to start incorporating tiles into these lessons. And uh, today's uh, tile, we're going to incorporate our ribbon that we learned last time uh, and our new tangle. So let's get started. All right. Shattuck, again, is a ribbon tangle like Sarnia Cherie that we did in the last lesson. And it also begins the same way with these parallel lines and auras. So I'm going to make these this way. Yes, okay, just like yesterday. Now, Shattuck can be done with either curved or straight lines or probably a variety of other ways that I haven't thought of. And you want to start with a diagonal line from one corner. And then from there, you want to fill in with aura lines. And remember, aura lines are parallel lines to the ones that you just drew. Mine are sort of our lines <laughs> because I don't get very consistent with them, but uh, I'm gonna do my best today for you guys. Now I will tell you that I really struggle with Shattuck. It's a very simple pattern. You shift your tile, go in the opposite direction and fill in with our lines. Diagonal lines coming from one side to the other in an opposite direction. Fill with R lines. It's very simple. So opposite direction. You start where you left. You start uh, your diagonal line where the last diagonal line you, you drew left off. Okay. And fill with R lines. And those who shake and don't have good hand control you should slow down and breathe at this point pay close attention to where you're starting and stopping your lines this is a this is a challenge for me okay diagonal lines fill with our lines There you go. Check how we're doing here. I 
flesh I either get them too short or too long and that's that's not what I want okay and if you get one like this you can always put a little dot of jelly roll in there if it really bugs you but don't do that unless you need to unless you just can't help yourself all right so um, this is Shattuck with straight lines okay so let's talk about what happens if you put some rows of Shattuck together which is a really cool deal now I'm not gonna put a double row of Aras in here although you could if that's what you wanted to do okay and I'm gonna start by doing some of our ribbon practicing which is by learning how to make them larger as you go and I'm going to add a third degree of difficulty to this and uh, do this by um, curving the lines on this one now it is very cool to do these straight and straight and next to them and and or curved and curved next to each other and actually Let's just do our curved and not worry about it. But I'm going to pay attention and start each of my curved lines where these are. Okay, I'm going to line them up. And so here, right, like that. And you can fill these in to begin with, but I found if I did that too often, then I lost my place and forgot which way I was going. So let's not do that today. Let's come down here and fill in with some curved R lines and slow down, Cindy. As always, guys, slow down. Okay. Now I was watching uh, one of the project packs with uh, Rick Roberts drawing this earlier today and uh, he did a sort of a radiating uh, line uh, aura thing uh, that was really interesting the, where the uh, aura lines sort of uh, changed and were small in and, and got larger out and that's sort of where I ended up here although it was unintentional on my part. And let's not let me get too straight here since I'm doing curves. I tend to want to match and, you know, it's me. So I want to thank all of you guys who ordered uh, merchandise. I went, I forgot completely, I think, to mention that, that the company that we used uh, for this uh, does the European Union as well. So... You guys in the Netherlands and uh, Germany and Switzerland and Spain and all of you guys, Italy, <laughs> all you guys can can uh, get that. Now, as far as I believe Canada is good to go, um, I just don't know about like Australia or any of those places. So um, that would be something you would have to check. But you guys in Britain, Ireland, my girls in Ireland, shout out to you guys. Happy birthday to Caleb. I believe his birthday was sometime around now, right? Cindy, you're rushing. There we go. Um, I had a comment from somebody talking about how fast I talked in one of the old videos. I, I found that so funny. Back then, I thought it was really important to keep the videos short. I thought that was the most important thing because people weren't watching them all the way through. Of course, people don't watch these all the way through. Some of you do, and I know who you are, and I love you. Um, uh, but um, 
um, you know, not everybody does. But I used to think that if I made them shorter, that would help. And, you know, <laughs> it's a learning process, guys. Go easy on me. All right. So um, this is where you're at. And so you can curve these or you can draw them straight, however uh, you like. And I could put another row over here. Do these straight and line these up like this. Yeah. So that they match. Or whatever. <laughs> whatever. Yeah. And do the same over here with the curves. Uh, curve up. Curve down. Yeah. And you see, you do the, the row next to you with the row next to you in mind, if that makes sense. Um, you keep in mind the curves and the angles and where you're starting and stopping on uh, each side. And then you can match them up to very good effect, right? Okay, so let's get to it. Instead of teaching you a new ribbon tangle today, I found that I was really missing doing tiles with you guys. And I came up with um, a little bit of a different format for today. Um, and I hope that you got it's something that you guys are gonna like. In the last video, um, I felt like I was really missing something. I got to the end of it and I just felt like it wasn't right and I missed doing the tile with you guys I really missed that so I think um, I think uh, at least every now and then in this as we go forward I want to show you how what we learned the last time will fit into a tile okay how you can translate what we're doing right now into a tile okay I'm starting in traditional Zentangle fashion with by putting a pencil dot in each of the corners of my tile. Yes? Okay. And now um, I'm going to go ahead and draw a border, and I'm going to keep it kind of straight today because I'm going to do, be doing a lot of wiggling on the inside, <laughs> which is not anything new. I know you guys know this about me. All right, and for me, this is a very straight border, isn't it? Okay, so yesterday, when we learned about, sorry, yesterday we learned about a ribboning technique um, that you can use that I draw with a J shape, right? And uh, what I thought we would do today is use that, use that technique as a string in the tile and then put our shattuck into that and see how we do, okay? See what we come up with. So let's do that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my uh, petal shape or my ribbon shape over here, right here, all right? Then I'm going to draw it out all the way to the corner. And I'm going to bring my J, instead of stopping here, I'm going to bring my J all the way down and make it not a J anymore. Okay? And I'm going to bring this tongue part, as I like to call it, up. And we're going to do it like this. Okay? And so uh, we can do this because we want it to look like it's getting larger, right? And so this, this on a tile is a pretty dynamic way to set up a, set up a, a ribbon tangle, right? And so I wanted you to know that this, these techniques that we're learning can translate beautifully right onto your tiles. Okay, so you pin, you use your ribbon uh, as a string. You use your ribbon shape as a string, and then you fill it in. So let's put Shattuck in here today. 
and see how we come out. Now I have a choice of how I can do this. Now the first thing, of course, I want to define my lines with ink. <laughs> oh goodness. I am just giggling today about everything, so just ignore me. I am using my 01 today because Shattuck is fine work and I tend to get a little sloppy with my PN. Okay, let's see. Let's see if I can do this without making a mess. Remember, if you have trouble um, needing to pick up your pen and set it back down and you have trouble getting your pen to... Um, cooperate and line up right when you put it back down and you can always just leave a little bit of a gap I find that is better than uh, the messy overlap so just food for thought so if you ever see me do that that's why I do that All right, now let's add our auras. Remember, auras are a parallel line, and that applies to this just as it applies to um, Shattuck. You want them to be consistent. And so in this format, consistency would mean uh, the same width apart from your outer edge, which again is something I struggle with. Just let them go straight off. All right, they're gonna come right back out down here. See if we can draw this in without, without too much trouble. There we go. Well, we are doing the wiggles today, and that is absolutely okay, because what we end up with is going to turn out great. All right, so now I have a choice. I can put one single Shattuck in here and let it shine, or I can put two rows in here, all right? I think I'm going to put two rows, or lines of it and so what I need to do in order to achieve that is to put a double line down the center of this now <laughs> let's see if I can do that with some degree of um, accuracy no promises I'm gonna pay careful attention to following the line and matching the line uh, of the ribbon okay and then uh, which side we'll put it on this side mm. okay and now let's go up top on the other side of the ribbon and try this All right, so uh, let's do Shattuck 
Let's do Shattuck from down here first. All right. So I think I'm going to use straight lines or I might do straight on the inside track and curved on the outside track. Let's see. Let's <laughs> see what happens. All right, let's get it started. I'm going to take our time. At least I'm going to try to take care of, take my time. What you guys are getting up to on your own, I don't know. Settle down, guys and gals. Take some deep, calming breaths. Do it with me. In through the nose. Out through the mouth. Focus on each stroke of the pen. Focus on starting and stopping in the same way. Now I tend to handle these double double rows in this way so that I uh, so that I can stay. I don't know. It might not make a difference. I don't know. I guess it helps me to feel like uh, I can stay better in control of of um, I don't know what that was of uh, my lines uh, matching up. Try really hard not to encroach on your center line or your center uh, double ara there. Keeping that clean uh, is part of the visual effect on this. This is gonna be cool. What do you guys think? So, um, I've gotten a couple of comments uh, from you guys about what you think of the new project. I really want to hear from you and um, uh, get your input. It's really important to me to be able to incorporate traditional Zentangle into this project, even though we are working towards a, a big Zia project, um, a Zentangle-inspired art project. I still want uh, the Zen to be present here and even though the whoops just like that uh, even though the techniques that we're learning are more advanced um, I still feel like it's something that beginners can handle Let's see if I'll have to clean that up and the tangles that we're learning are certainly appropriate for beginners so uh, I just hope that if you're a beginner you will not freak out if this is too much for you. Practice these tangles in the standard way, however you like. Just stick with trying to make them come, start narrow and end up wide. You know, whatever you want to, to incorporate. Uh, but this is a very cool tangle. It's always been popular. It actually surprised me that there wasn't a printed step out somewhere and there may be I don't know I didn't investigate all of Linda Farmer's links that she had on there I did watch a cool video so Rick Roberts is always worth watching particularly with straight line tangles like this one he is extremely precise and very careful And so it's, it's always um, an inspiration to watch him draw. It always fills you with purpose as far as 
how you approach your lines. At least it does for me. Another thing that you can do on this is put some line weight on your outer line uh, to give it a little bit of emphasis, but we do that with shading anyway, so that's really a personal choice. You can start to see how cool this is going to be as we go, right? Just put one more in there, except maybe not like that. All right. Again, take your time when you start and stop. That's where I run into problems. Again, try to keep a comfortable hand position. Try to approach your strokes, each stroke of the pen from the same direction going the same way, making the same stroke over and over. Now these are necessarily going to start to change these lines as we move forward. The ribbon is shifting position now. Okay, so we're gonna be able to do one more here. And this one will be, whoops. Again, slow down, Cindy. Take your time, woman. All right. So that will be like that. Okay, so that's one side, right? Now, let's come from this direction down, and I'm going to make these curve, because I can, it's my tile, and it makes me happy. And you should do what you want on your tile, because it'll make you happy. And how much extra happiness do we get in this world? Not enough, I say, not enough. Let's see. if I can get us started here. I'm not sure I did a very good job. We're gonna keep after it. We're not gonna prejudge our outcome before we get to the end because it's not an outcome until we're finished. And so instead of making straight lines, I'm just doing these little open C shapes. Everyone can draw C's, right? It's just a slightly curved line. Well, 
I'm going to keep telling myself it's just a slightly curved line, Cindy. <laughs> All right, so let's come back in towards the center here. And there's nothing to say that you can't do this opposite, right? You don't have to match these coming. Um, you don't have to make this a mirror. You can do it however you like on your tile. Oh, I'm so glad I'm doing a tile with you guys today. I missed it so much last lesson. So we're going to try to incorporate this. I was glad the video was only 30 minutes, but I did miss, I missed the camaraderie of the tile creation. So on the merchandise, guys, besides being available in the European Union, if you want something that that uh, Teespring has that I do not have on the merchandise shelf, like, you know, fleece blankets, whatever, whatever they happen to have, fanny packs, <laughs> whatever makes you happy, uh, I will be happy to make it for you. Okay, I'll be happy to add it to the listing. Also, they like to run these campaigns, but the stuff is still available after the campaign is over. So don't don't worry about not being able to get it now because that's not going to happen. All right, some of that stuff I had had up since last year, so it's not a big deal. You'll still be able to get it a year from now. Hopefully there will be a lot more cool stuff up there. That Hope design sort of just happened on its own while I was doing something else. And it looked so good on the face mask, I thought, yeah, why not? I thought, you know, if I have to wear a face mask, which, you know, it looks like we are going to have to do everywhere. Um, I I want it to look good and I want it to have some style and I know a lot of people that make fa face masks that are beautiful and they're done with donated fabrics and all that but, and there that is a beautiful beautiful uh, service my friend dear friend Sandra Mitchell makes those uh, and I don't know if she's selling them or how that's working out but she is a wonderful lady and uh doing a true service for her community with that all right a couple more now each time as you get larger you're going to want to make your curves or straight lines uh larger you're going to make that section larger sort of grow the whole thing actually decent. I always get excited when I do good lines or when I draw lines well that that is I might know what good grammar is but I don't always choose to use it. There you go. Sometimes I don't know what good grammar is. I was so embarrassed by my German yesterday or the last lesson. It's hard for me not to do the everyday thing. I get confused. And I think, I think the last video, the Sarnia Shafni video was tough on me because I, I was still finding my legs. How are we going to do this? How should this look? What, what will you guys want? What will I want? And I still want us to be able to draw together. And so that's why we're doing a tile. So I hope you guys are breaking it out with me. Taking some deep breaths, taking your time, focusing on each stroke of the pen. That is, this is a perfect tangle 
to illustrate each stroke of the pen. It's just the same strokes over and over. Okay, so from here down. All right. So partial here. I appreciate you guys' this patience with the extracurricular noise, particularly the fan and the motors outside. I very much would like to uh, invest in a new rig for recording that includes some soundproofing. So that may or may not happen soon, we'll see. So I'm just gonna use the curve of this outer line to determine how this goes. Like that. Okay, that's pretty cool, yeah. I like that a lot. So let's shade this, and then I'm gonna try to think about, see how we're doing on time. Uh, let's shade this, and then uh, let's see. Actually, I think I'm going to use my Koi coloring brush pen. help me speed this up just a tad. It's also going to be a lot messier, so we'll see how it goes. Okay, and I'm not going to shade next to my middle lines. And I'm gonna take, let's see, seems like I got fuzz on the tip of this. I'm gonna take extra care with my brush pen around that middle line too. Very careful trying not to encroach, which again is very difficult for me. Okay. So I'm just going to follow each, follow this um, down the line, shading each one of these as we talked about. And if you're going to try your Koi coloring brush pen, just go easy. You just want a little thin bit right there. It's probably better practice to go out like this so you don't have such a line to get rid of. And we all know that I always, always have a line to get rid of. It just takes longer that way. You can also dab it down a little bit. That usually works. Simba is snoring up a storm. He is very frustrated that his little boy has not come home. I just assume his little boy get lots and lots of fun and exercise. 
they have a swimming pool where he is and so he is going to have a good time he loves his cousin shout out to Makai happy birthday big guy not my little Makoodles anymore are you buddy I just embarrassed him on YouTube <laughs> sorry buddy hope you love me anyway I'm going to put a little bit of graphite along this upper edge, or graphite, what am I doing? <laughs> I'm using a koi brush pen. I'm going to put a little bit of color here, right on the edge, uh, to show that this is sort of going back, and I am going to put that over the middle line on purpose, intentionally. Okay, then uh, under here, see if I can do this without making a mess. I'm going to dab in just a little bit of color along this edge. Then when I get to blending it out, then I'll decide if I want more or not. Oh, I'm going to move my knee. It's starting to hurt. Therapy is still going well. I think I'm starting to mend. It takes forever though. When I think about doing this to myself on the other side, I just, I don't know if I'm ready for that or not. I might give it another six months. I would like for the knee on the, on the other side to stop hurting so much before I load up on the other side. You guys that have had knee replacements have really been encouraging, so thank you for that. Knowing that it will be uh, transitional, the pain is is not const won't always be there. I mean, that really helps to know that that it gets better. Got some interesting stuff going on down here. Right now, in my head, I'm trying to decide whether or not to use my Tombow Blender. Um, on the one hand, it would be extremely fast and effective here. Uh, on the other hand, <laughs> yeah, it's it's got some pigment lifting issues, which may or may not cause trouble for me. I don't know. Uh, let's see. So let's use that blender very carefully. Uh, this is the Tombow N00 blender marker that comes, it's a colorless blender marker that comes with the Tombow, um, comes with the Tombow uh, marker sets, the water-based markers, the brush pens, Tombow brush pens, which are wonderful tools. And this is the N00 right here. And uh, it's colorless. However, we learned in, during the 100 day project that it will pick up the pigment from the ink pens, from the, the micron pens, and spread it around. So uh, let me make sure this is not gonna be pink. Looky there. Nice save, Cindy, nice save. important to keep your pens clean all right and important to check those things before you get started okay let's see how we do here I find these very helpful for blending these. But it took me it took me a while to realize that that it was moving pigment from the ink as well as from the marker, the uh, koi coloring brush, 
And so, but once we figured out what was going on, thanks to you guys and your input, it's not a bad tool for shading, I have to say. And it works great for blending out the water-based markers. However, that said, you should probably keep your tip clean if you're going to do this because, and by that I mean, you know, get a scratch paper and, and do what I did on the other side of this tile until uh, it comes back clear. And the reason for that is the more of the pen, the pen pigment that you pick up as you go, the darker your shades are going to get and the more overwhelming that color is going to be. And so if you want to keep it under control, it's a good thing to keep your, um, your marker blender uh, clean, the nib on it. You don't want it to pick up too much of that uh, pen pigment, unless you do. It's just one of those things, knowing, knowing your tools. And that is handy. It's handy to know. And look how dynamic this is. Right? And see the meta patterns that, that emerge when you put these two together. Which is why I like to put them together. So for some of you beginners that this is going to be a new pattern for, this is one of the um, one of the Zentangle original patterns. Um, they call them tangles, and um, it is a good one for Aura practice. See how easy it is to blend these with this. And I don't mind that this area is going to be a little bit darker since we're coming up the inside of a ribbon. It's naturally going to have a little bit more color, I think. And by that, I don't mean color color. I mean uh, shaded pigment. Gray's a color too. Just like black, as Mari, as Mari reminds me, and Caden reminds me. I need to call that kid and see how he's doing. Let's see how nice and easy that was. All right, I really liked that. Let's see if without adding any color, I can just put a little bit of shading along the side here. I want it to be pretty subtle and not overwhelming. And just kind of be a finishing touch around the edges. think I want to add any of this side stuff down here. I think it'll be too much. It'll detract from the shading that we've got on there now. All right. <clears throat> so I have decided I do not want to add any more uh, shattuck in here. However, uh, I'm wondering what we can do to sort of bring this together and make it finished. 
Hmm. I'm actually thinking that some transcending might be interesting on this. I just don't know what I could do that wouldn't overwhelm us too much. Uh, transcending would be uh, drawing another pattern over the top of this uh, in like white or black, um, something like that. I don't know. I do not know. But I'll tell you what, I'll figure it out. <laughs> Members, you can expect a video of me figuring it out. All right. So this is where I'm going to leave you guys today. I hope this has given you some food for thought for how you can use these ribboning techniques in your tiles. And if you wanted to, you could just uh, not round the end of this petal like and just take this straight off the edge. That would work just as well. And uh, so practice this and put it on a tile and see what you come up with. I hope you guys will continue to post your uh, art for me on Instagram. Uh, this one, hashtag Tangled Ribbon Flower. And uh, also tag me, the Tireless Tangler. Guys, you're awesome. You're so awesome. You make this so worth it. Thank you so much. And I'm going to see you for the next lesson on Tangled Ribbon Flowers. See you then.